Yunleos Gaib loves Jesus Christ and has paid a price for that devotion. However, there was a time when he wanted nothing to do with Christianity. Yun Laos was content in being a Muslim and was annoyed with his Christian employer who would share the gospel with him at his car repair shop in Palo City on the island of Sulawesi. When my boss kept telling me about Jesus, I got more angry because in the Quran, the Islam way, Jesus is only a prophet, not the Lord, not God. In anger, I said to him, if Jesus is the Lord, call him to me so I could see him. Later that year in 1999, on the last day of Ramadan, a Muslim holiday, Yun Laos went from the mosque back to the workshop to repair a van. He thought the job would be simple and quick, so he didn't take proper safety measures. I didn't realize the driver of the van was leaning up against it, and the van started to move and it came down on me. Yun Laos says it happened so quickly he was unable to get out from under the falling vehicle, and his leg got stuck on the jack. I was then unconscious, and during that time I believe two angels came to me and took me to heaven. In a room I saw a group of people singing and praising the Lord, but on the left there were many people who were crying out and asking about the place after death. The angels said, I must kneel down. Yun Lea says he believes he was on the left side and was only concerned about himself and not about what happens after death. It was then he believes Jesus spoke to him. It's not your time to die, but follow me because I am the way, I am Jesus. Follow me and I will take you from the darkness to the amazing light by my spirit and I will send you back to your body. Yun Leos's co-workers managed to pull him from under the van and took him to the hospital where an x-ray revealed his left ribs and chest had been crushed. The doctor said there was a strong possibility Yun Leos wouldn't survive and he was moved to the morgue. Yoon Leo says he woke up from his coma in the mortuary surrounded by some believers, including his boss. The doctors then took three x-rays and were amazed that there was no damage to his ribs or his chest. One doctor stated, it is because of the Lord. After I left the hospital, I felt different in my life. I felt no damage to my body. I felt healthy. Since then, I realized that Jesus was real and true. My boss gave me a Bible and I started to read it. I also read Christian books, but I wasn't a true Christian yet. Yun Laos was beaten by Muslims after he was seen going to church. He struck one of the Muslims with a stick and was arrested and jailed. A couple weeks later, Yun Laos committed his life to Christ and was baptized. He then began openly discussing his new faith with Muslims which led to him being labeled as an apostate and making him a target for violence. I went back home to my village about two hours from Palu City. My family knew I had become a Christian from one of my relatives and they called me an apostate. Some of the people in my village, the Muslims, said I was an apostate and deceiver and said I must die. One day, I was ministering in my wife's church. It was in the evening and I was praying. On the way home, I was walking with another man from the church and there was a group of people waiting for me. The person with me ran away because he knew these people were waiting for me. That group of people made a big circle around me. I was in the center. They hit me. They kicked me. They threw rocks at my head. I was like a doll. The attack was so intense. There were so many punches, so many kicks to my body, but then I didn't feel anything from the wounds and injuries on my body. Yun Laos has been threatened with death, beaten, kicked out of his home, and disowned by his family because of his decision to follow Jesus. I want to pay a price to minister to Christ. Yun Laos and his wife Suwicha are in training at an underground Bible discipleship school in West Java. They are fully aware that their ministry could take them into an area hostile to the gospel. We must live for the Lord, even in danger. We must serve the Lord because He has already paid the price. I made a commitment when I became a Christian, so it's not a big deal for me to go anywhere, even if it's a dangerous place or a dangerous area. He has paid a price for ministering for Jesus. But I said, what about me? I'm from a Christian family. Why can't I do for Jesus like others, like my husband who's from a Muslim background?